Welcome to this TAS Academy HVAC training video. Measuring actual heating system BTUs delivered. With Total Air Supply technical trainer Randall S. Ripley. The amount of BTUs a system delivers into a conditioned space can be effectively calculated when system temperatures and airflows have been measured giving the technician the ability to know if the system is operating efficiently. The late Rob Doc Falk of the National Comfort Institute, NCI, said in an article on system delivered BTUs, for decades we have been taught that the silver bullets to energy savings are high efficiency equipment and tight ducts. Once you master measuring live system BTUs, it becomes clear that the equipment and ducts are only pieces to the efficiency puzzle. If the system isn't moving BTUs, efficiency will never be realized. The shift in perception changed by measuring system delivered BTUs is that all of the heat generated by a furnace rarely makes it into the envelope. Actually, the average U.S. heating and cooling system only delivers an average of 57% of the equipment rated BTUs into the home. The efficiency number on the box means nothing until the equipment is installed correctly and the system's performance has been tested and verified. In the heating mode, the performance is evaluated in sensible BTUs only. The formula takes airflow and temperatures that have been measured in a live operating system and multiplies the volume of airflow times the temperature change times a BTU multiplier to find the delivered BTUs of a system. The payoff is found in the difference between the equipment rated BTU and the delivered, the delivered BTUs that make it into your customers' homes. You will be surprised at the percentage of BTUs being delivered into the home by some of the systems you test. In this video, we will look at the definitive measurement of HVAC system efficiency, system delivered BTUs, and go through the needed test and simple calculation to obtain the system delivered BTUs of a gas furnace heating system. Sensible BTU formula definitions. The formula itself is sensible capacity equals 1.08, which is a constant, times delta T times CFM. The, sim the simplest definition of a sensible BTU is that one BTU equals the amount of heat generated by completely burning a wooden kitchen match. Sensible BTUs, a unit of measurement of heat content in air used in heating systems that when added or removed, only raise or lower the temperature. CFM, Measured airflow in cubic feet per minute determined by measuring the total external static pressure and comparing to the blower performance data. Delta T, the air temperature difference. When measuring system BTUs, it is the difference between the return air temperature and the supply temperature. And you should note that that's the average return air temperature and the average supply temperature which we will which will be explained here in just a moment the 108 the 1.08 is a constant of 60 minutes per hour times 0 0.075 pounds cubic foot standard weight of air times 0 0.024 btu pound standard specific heat of air Gas heating BTU output capacity. Read the nameplate data. Record the listed BTU output. 
If output is not listed, multiply rated input by the heating equipment efficiency rate. 60,000 BTUs input times 0.96, the efficiency rating, equal 57,600 rated BTUs output. You can also record the temperature rise in the rate rated static pressure if you look on a you know a, a a startup sheet such as the one you're looking at step one calculating system delivered btus in heating measure the external static pressure of the system in the heating mode in this example we are at the limit of 0 0.50 inches of water column and we record that. Step two is measure temperature rise. We can't get the temperature rise number in the, in the conventional way because this only tells us the furnace is putting out BTUs, but it doesn't tell us if they are being delivered into the conditioned space. We need to take temperature samples from several grills. If more than one used and diffusers in the duct system and average them out. You can do the beginning, middle and the end or the beginning and the end, but the more temperature readings, the more accurate your average temp will be. Step two, measure temperature rise. Remember, to let the unit run for minimum of 10 minutes before taking the temperature rise. The average return temperature, we will take the average temperature of the two return grills and take that total at, and uh, the total of return temps, divide it by two because we have two return measurements and that will equal the average return temperature. And we will do the same thing for the supply. In this case, we're using three, the, the end, the beginning, the end, middle, and the end. Uh, and then that total, we total those. And then we divide them by uh, the total number of supply temps. We take that number, divide it by three, and there's our average supply temperature. So in this case, his, again, the average supply temperature minus the average return temp equals the rise. For this example, we will say uh, these are our numbers. 126 degree supply temperature minus a 70 degree return temperature equals a 56 degree return. Uh, a rise, I, I mean, excuse me. So we come down here and we put our 70 degree uh, return air temperature dry bulb. And then we put our heating supply temperature 126 degrees dry bulb. And that gives us our 56 degree rise. So we look at the fan. Now we're going to plot our airflow with the static pressure and temp rise. And we look at our airflow tables for the particular model of unit that uh, you're looking at, and what we're looking at. And the model number is over here on the right. And that's the one we need. And then the temp rise range is 35 to 65 degrees. And our actual temp rise was 56 degrees. And our static pressure was at uh, 0.5 inches of water column. And our CFM is 953 CFM. So now we have our numbers. So we come over here to sensible capacity. And we look at, the, again, the formula. We see the formula up there. And we know that we're talking about dry bulb. Uh, we're not talking about wet bulb. Uh, when we do this, this this spring, coming spring for air conditioning, 
we will talk about welt valve and how the formula works for air conditioning. So now we will start putting our numbers in. We had that measured return temperature, 70. Our measured supply air uh, dry bulb was 126. And the, we do the math and we uh, at 56 degree delta T. Now we have the sensible BTU equals the 0.1, the 1.08 constant times 56. And now we add our CFM and we do the math and that equals 57,637 BTUs output. So then we would verify output matches numbers expected based on furnace efficiency. If within 10%, the furnace is doing its job. And as you can see, uh, we're doing pretty good um, for these numbers, uh, the 57,600 uh, BTUs is the rated output. So according to the calculation, we are spot on with our efficiency. So the final takeaway. So in our example with the 60,000 BTU input, 96% AFU furnace, 57,600 output is good. But 57,600 BTUs output would be really bad if the unit was an 80K or a 100K BTU input, 96% AFUE furnace. This indicates why we should be measuring system delivered BTUs. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new videos that are released. Thanks for watching. You can watch all Taz Academy videos at www.youtube.com forward slash at Total Air Supply. And again, thanks for watching and hopefully you come back for more.